Good evening, everyone. It's so a uh, pleasure to be here tonight and to share this lovely, really lovely restaurant. And uh, it's my first time to do a talk in a restaurant environment. I just think it's so relaxed. It's so nice. We should do this more <laughs> in the future. Uh, so I'm so glad to share with you about my project, uh, which is the Silver Shoppers, and how we can use design to improve the supermarket service for older customers. Okay, quickly about, uh, you know, I'll go through about background and research and methodologies and some of the, uh, the key findings of our shopping stories. Okay, so I think we all know about, you know, the world is aging. By uh, 2050, the number of people classified as old in the world could rise over 2 billion. And this show you about uh, from 1991 to 2031, about the increase of aging across the different areas of the UK. Uh, and if we look at the China, which is the biggest aging society in the world, and this map show you about the aging growth between 1982 to 2010. And the map show the darker color shows the more percentage of the uh, older people, which is classified as over uh, 60 years old. And when we put the UK and China together, and you can see for the UK, is by the uh, two thousand, I think by the two thousand fifty, uh, for the people who are aged over sixty-five in the UK will be around twenty-four percent, and in China is twenty-six percent. So you can see it's really global, you know, trend of aging. So as we know, uh, when people getting older, and due to the different generations, the current older people are different comparing with the previous ge older generations. Uh, for the current generations, they become more healthier, and also they have more uh, economic power, and they're willing to spend more for shopping, especially for the grocery shopping. At the same time, from the human factor perspective, and they all experience different kind of you know limitations or the difficulties uh, of limitations in the uh, kind of uh, hearing or moving mobility issues or the flexibility of the fingers or the kind of uh, cognitions and the different types of uh, human factors. And also comparing with the younger shoppers they do have a relatively higher loyalty to the stores. So if they like, for example, if they like to go to Wichos, they're more likely to stay with Wichos for their grocery shopping. They might not go to Sainsbury's or Tesco's. Uh, and also, they prefer about uh, more about uh, high quality food than before, and that might be relevant because of uh, they have uh, you know kind of more money to spend for shopping. Same time, some researchers uh, mentioned about uh, they like to do a joint buying decisions. So sometimes uh, they go shopping with their friends or with their families. So they like to, you know, make a, a kind of a group decision about what to buy. So uh, because of these differences, um, lots of researchers suggest about uh, the retailers must take age into consideration when providing a product or services to this uh, aging generation. So uh, therefore, it is important to continually updating of knowledge of what are the required and what are the unmet needs from this group of people. So uh, for this research, we aim to investigate uh, the older customer's shopping experience and in order to identify what are the challenges and the difficulties they face and how design can be used to improve the supermarket environment and the service for uh, this customer uh, segmentation. So the key uh, kind of elements we focus on are what are their shopping experience? So what are the current lay they're facing during their shopping journey? Uh, and then how we can use inclusive design so, which means we are providing a design solution not only satisfy the older generation, but also would be useful to the younger generation as well. And uh, so, based on this research aim, um, we've had uh, this kind of long journey. We had uh, this project since back to 2013. So we start from literature review and uh, based on some focus groups, we try to understand what are the kind of issues and uh, um, the older shopper face uh, from the old customers and also from the retailers perspective by using focus groups. 
And based on the result from FERC's groups, we designed an ethnographic user study, which we ask uh, uh, the older participants to do some diaries. So because we want to know not only about their in-store shopping, we want to understand what are the big pictures behind their shopping behavior. So for example, you might have uh, exact the same store setting, provide exact the same service or products. However, if the store is located in an area, you know, in the city center, have very good communication, you know, bus services, or if you have exactly the same store, but in an area which they have no bus services, okay? So for the second case, only the older people who have uh, access to the car, they can go to the store. But for the people who don't have access to a car, they might not be able to go to that shop. And also we find out lots of people, they combine their shopping journey with their journey to their GP you know, appointment, or they go to the post office, or you know, on the way or on the way back from the church. So we try to understand the big picture you know, out of their you know, kind of traditionally understand about a shopping journey, which more focus on the in-store. So from our research, we are kind of start our observation from their home, how they prepare for their shopping and how they go for shopping, and how they do their shopping in a you know, supermarket store. And once they've done this, how they go home, and how they put back their shopping stuff into the fridge or into the cupboard. So that is a, our definition of a shopping journey. And uh, so uh, for the user study, we've asked them to uh, write some diaries to record about what are their daily routines or what are the activities they do. And then we also ask them to do some shopping inspection cards. And uh, so uh, we give them some like weekly based uh, tasks. For example, we want them to focus on the shopping trolley or the shelf in this week. And we give them three cards. We ask them about, uh, firstly, what are the issues? And uh, secondly, and how to improve these issues? We, we name that as a kind of list card, so list issues. Second card we named as a dream it. So we'll ask a question about uh, if you will be the manager of this store, how you will improve the issues of trolley design. And then third card we call it as a scorecard. So we give them some questions and we ask them to rank about, for example, how do you think the size of the trolley? If you're really satisfied, give five stars. And if you're not satisfied, give one star. And we have uh, those cards examples uh, in the corner. So if you are interested, you can have a look about those diary cards and uh, um, the inspection cards. Apart from a kind of, uh, you know, the cards uh, recording about their shopping experience, we also uh, video observe the way of how they do shopping. So we're wearing a very small GoPro camera on the chest and we follow their whole shopping journey from home to store and then back to home. So from that, we can see lots of their kind of motions about how they do shop exactly. And after the observation, we interview them and we try to understand what are the kind of logic behind it. For example, if they are standing in front of the shelf for two minutes and we want to know what they were thinking at the moment. And we want to know about whether they are calculating the price or whether they are you know, searching any of the items. So based on those user study, we develop our questionnaires. And we launched our questionnaires in the UK and China, and we got the preliminary results, and we have some posters there to show you the, the key findings. If you are interested, you can have a look. And then based on all of those research results, we've encouraged the design students from Tsinghua University in China and Brunel University in the UK to design some new ideas which can be applied to improve the supermarket service and the environment. We also have those posters, so do have a look. Uh, yeah, so that's the whole methodology. So sampling. So this map shows the, the aging of the UK in 2014, where we planned for our user study. So in the UK, we have the Anik, we have Shrewsbury and the West Dorset as our research site, because that is have relatively higher percentage of uh, older people. And in China, we have Nanjing, we have Chengdu, and we have Qingdao as the three regions for our research. And this is a kind of in, a participant engagement process, start from recruitment, we do the diary, we do the observation and the interview, and then by the end we collect everything to, uh, you know, from them and we give them a hundred pound reward. 
uh, which is a shopping voucher from our industrial uh, partners. So uh, because we don't have much time tonight, I just want to quickly show you some of the key findings from our uh, project website. So uh, this website is uh, one of our previous uh, exhibition, uh, which we were a part of the London Design Festival 2017. The exhibition just finished by the end of September. So I've got the magic finger here. If we go to the link, I think Silver here is uh, helping me to, to do the magic. Okay, if we go to the exhibition showcase, the second one, uh, uh, yes, third one, yeah. If we go to the methodology and the key findings, yeah. Okay. And if we go to the second poster, here, Okay, so here are the some of the results from our questionnaire. So that shows about from the UK we have 237 uh, response and from China we have uh, 303 response. If we move uh, down to the page, okay, and from the gender part you can see in the UK we have a relatively less of the uh, male participants and in China we have relatively higher so we assume that in China uh, the older gentlemen they are more likely to enjoy or join the shopping activity than the UK and if we move down okay so uh, this poster just shows about uh, some background of uh, our participant between the UK and China and the interesting one is, uh, for example, here, the question asks, do you have a computer or tablet at home? And in the UK, where that is really very surprised result. Uh, it shows about 65% uh, of the participants from the UK, they say yes, and they use a computer or tablet. The previous literature almost say, you know, it's like around like 20% or 30% older people, they do use a technology such as, you know, computer or tablet. But this is really surprising result. And in China, 25% uh, people say yes, they've used it. But from the China side, the interesting one is the second one. They say, yes, I do have one, but I don't use them. So in China, 52%, over half, just over half of them say, I do have a computer, but I don't use them. So which shows they do have the economic power to have one, but some, there must be some reasons to stop them to use them. Or it might be you know, their children purchase for them, or it might be the children use them for them for online shopping. So that's kind of some very interesting uh, result. So, uh, I just give you some examples. Every information is online, and we do have also have the posters over there. I'm more than happy to show you more detail to explain to you uh, during the break time. Okay, so if we go back to the showcase, and if we go to the solution and the products, yeah. So in here, we displayed all the new ideas and uh, uh, product concepts from the design students. And for example, this is a vending uh, freezer example. So this is kind of uh, back response to the problem about uh, when older people, they say when they open the freezer, there's always cold air come to them. And also uh, when you open it and uh, uh, you might just close it, and to you know, for when you start searching, you know, you, you might just open it, try it, and not put it back, and close it. But when the warm air get into, you got to the freak, uh, kind of frogged about the the glasses, so you can't see it at all. So you might have to open it and clean it, and then close it again because you don't want to have all the cold air all the time. So you clean it, you close it, you search again. So in order to you know, simplify, that's kind of very interesting. Maybe it's good for exercise, but uh, not good for shopping. So the students suggest about this vending machine freezer, if we move down a little bit. So with this kind of uh, a vending freezer, a customer can just push the trolley down into the middle of uh, here, and they just need to choose which product they want, and the product will automatically drop down into, into the trolley. So that's one of the solutions. Okay, so uh, I'll end my presentation here, but I'll, you know, really, really happy to discuss with you about more details during the break.